What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Welcome, bike, to a brand spanking new week. It's Monday, so we're doing a mock draft. We're doing a real draft. We're drafting on Underdog Fantasy. Literally the best website slash app to use for all things fantasy football drafting this summer. It's the only platform we're going to be using to help y'all prep for your fantasy football drafts. Okay? So we're diving in. I need to tweet out the link because we're going to get into a 12 team. It's going to be a 12-teamer. It's half PPR. And it's best ball. Those of y'all that are new to best ball, I would suggest this is the, the sharpest place to draft to keep on top of trends and all that other good yada, 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 Utah Jazz shit. Underdog Fantasy, the link to download the app will be the first thing in my description. It'll take you right to the iOS app store. It'll take you to the Google store, whatever kind of phone you're on. They're really smart like that, okay? And the people behind the uh, the link are also the ones behind the app. And they're really smart, and they put together a wonderful, beautiful platform on Underdog which you could do these best ball drafts. So you draft a big-ass team, 18 roster spots, no kickers, no defense, which is my favorite part. And uh, each week it starts the best players at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end position based on the scoring format. And on underdog, there are a ton of different game types. If you're into other sports as well, they've got NBA, they got pick em games as well. So they got a little bit of gambling and spicing it up if you need to. Um, so NBA, MLB, NFL, you know, they have all, all different types of game type depending, you know, different, uh, whatever sinks your submarines as, as they like to say. So get on underdog fantasy. And when you deposit $10 and you use the promo code B D G E, they're literally just going to throw twenty five dollars on top of you, on top of whatever you put down on your account. So you throw ten bucks, your account is going to say thirty five after you use the promo code BDGE. You can win some money on the pickums. Make sure you're following uh, Mr. Animal over there. He's throwing out losing pickums daily. So if you just do the opposite of whatever he said, you're going to be a very rich man very quickly. But I'm ready to jump into the draft. Okay, ready to jump to draft. Give you some shitty analysis. Let me uh, tweet out the link. Why do I keep? doing that in discord i keep doing at all instead of at everyone so i'm going to drop the link into my private draft in both discord and on the tweeter and it will fill up in about 11 seconds hopefully so we're going to we're going to hop into the draft board here we are so we are waiting for nine more people we're waiting for eight more people seven more people and uh and guys like i always do the screen record on their website but their app is fucking beautiful and typically i do uh, all my drafting on their app and uh and i would suggest you download the app right now with the link in the description it'll be the first thing pinned in the comment section as well so we're waiting for four more people let me throw the little code up on the screen and this is a again 12 team half ppr it will randomize the draft spot as soon as we fill up. And the starting roster spots are one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, and uh, and a flex spot. So what you want to be doing is keeping an eye on the roster settings. Because I'm in the middle of a dynasty startup, and we did tiered PPR. So it's half PPR for running backs. Full PPR for wide receiver, 1.5 for tight end. And we start three wide receivers. So people are fading wide receivers really, really heavily, myself included. And um, and that's something to be con concerned about a little bit here when you're starting three wide receivers. Because the reason, you know, you want to take running backs, you want to take quarterbacks and super flex is because there's not a lot of starting ones to begin with. When you start to expand the roster spots like they do on underdog where you're starting three wide receivers each week, um, you know, Obviously, that makes the positional scarcity a little bit a little bit greater because you need to be starting three. And by the time, you know, three times 12, 36, there are obviously more than 36 startable fantasy wide receivers. Um, but that just makes it a little bit more valuable when we're looking at wide receivers, which is why we like to go high volume on them. I will be drafting from the 107. I will be drafting from the 107. This is good. I don't think I've gotten this spot yet. So this will be fun. I'm assuming we're just going to see 48 running backs off the rip. And they have their uh, they have their ADP right here. So when you're drafting, they show the ADP. And all of these drafts are money drafts, right? You can go as little as $3 all the way up to, I think, like $1,000. You can do 12-team drafts. You can do three-person drafts, which are really fun if you have really low self-esteem. Go and uh, hop in a three-team draft and then look at your team afterwards and just pretend it is a 12-team draft. 
because your team's going to be fucking start. All right, so we are off. We are off. Now, usually I do these on the live streams, but I didn't feel like live streaming today. I wanted to experiment a little bit with with some with some things on the uh, uploads for YouTube. Uh, it sucks that Sen is in here. Sen has gotten in both of the Dynasty startups that I just got in, and now he's in my best ball drafts. So we have C-Mac at one. We have Dalvin Cook at two. And let's see where Senna goes at three. It's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty standard, typical start. Like he joins in and then immediately times out. You love to see it. Derrick Henry at three. Kamara at four. Ah, Zeke has moved all the way up now. I mean, his ADP is at seven, technically, but that still puts him as the sixth player off the board. It's tied with Jonathan Taylor. And I'll be sitting at seven and hating myself for whoever I'm going to be having to pick. You know what's going to be nice about this draft? Is since I'm not live streaming, the people in the draft can't actually see who I want or who I want to take. So they can't fucking snipe me, even though I'm sure I'm going to get sniped like 58 times. Saquon at 105. I think that's about right. I think that's about how uh, most of the drafts should start. I think given Saquon's injury... And the timetable for his return, you know, he drops into the bottom tier of those first five running backs. We have Jonathan Taylor off the board at the 106. And I'm sitting here, you know, I don't want to go with the tight end this early because you could just draft three of them and you'll get a good outcome. Definitely not going with a running back this early or a uh, wide receiver this early or a quarterback. So I'm sitting here, you know, who's the RB7? And I started working on my rankings and uh, right now, it's really close between Zeke and Cam Akers. I have a lot of Cam Akers, so I want to diversify. I do a lot of drafts on underdog guys. Like, one of my favorite things to do on here is to just, you know, with your $35, you can jump in like five or six slow drafts where it's like eight hours between picks. So that way you're not rushed uh, and you have to sit down and give like a 45-minute commitment to the draft. You just get on a bunch of slow drafts. And, um, and then every half hour or so, you get a pick. And that's what I like to do. And since I'm in a lot of them, you know, I always look to diversify the revenue with the players that I pick. So sometimes I go with Cam there. Sometimes I go with Zeke there. Every once in a while, I'll go with Nick Chubb all the way up there. I think they're all fine picks. But Zeke gets me really excited because I think that um, I, I just think like given what we saw the sample size last year on what Dallas's offense could might be uh, their pace, the number of targets that Zeke was getting in the beginning of the year. The number of carries we know he's going to get, they're, they're going to have a much healthier offensive line there in Dallas this time around. I think Zeke's probably about as safe as it comes. You know, like I, I get the downside. The downside is that people subjectively think that he was washed last year. That's it. Um, if you're getting excited about Tony Pollard, like who in their right mind would say that Tony Pollard's actually going to come in and start ripping off touches from Ezekiel Elliott like it's just not going to happen it's not going to happen to a point where it's valuable enough that Zeke needs to drop in the rankings so I, th I think Zeke's in for a big big fucking bounce bike getting him you know as your RB1 at the end of the first round is is a uh, is a roll of the dice I'm willing to throw onto the table Zeke at 1-7 Akers at 1-8 Tyreek Hill at 1-9 Nick Chubb at the 10 Austin Eckler at the 11, Aaron Jones at the 12, Kelsey to one, Antonio Gibson to two, Joe Mixon to three. You know, what's funny. I know like I was one of the guys, I, I was someone that was like very hesitant to draft Joe Mixon last year. I didn't really want any pieces of him in redraft and that ended up being a, a good fade. I'm much more in on Mixon this year than I am last year. Like my one concern was that they just never showed us that they want to use him in the passing game. And then they got rid of Geo. So Geo was like the thorn in his side. And I know uh, there's just reports coming out like every five seconds with Joe Mixon right now. But listen, he, if he's splitting third down carries or third down snaps with somebody, it's like it's um, it's Samaji P. Ryan. He's not a better pass catcher than Mixon. So I don't think that's going to be a, a problem. OK, so we have all the running backs that I would have thought about taking off the board now. Now it's getting kind of ugly. I'm not, I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, you know, I have no Stefan Diggs action. I have, I have no... I have no Stefan Diggs in my portfolio, I do not think. So I'm going to take him because I think he's just good for another 150, 160 targets this year. And uh, and it's just, not a, it's just not a pick that you're going to be upset about. I feel like I just picked two very high floor players, which is not something I typically always do. Let me make my little socials smaller so you guys can see my team up to this point. That didn't work either. 
Make sure you're following me on Twitter, on Instagram, because when I do these drafts, if you want to draft with me, if you want to get in them with the big dogs, um, I will be shooting them out on Twitter for the most part and in our Discord. Wow, so we got Darren Waller at the two seven, Chris Carson going up at the two eight. So that's my thing. Like you guys know, I'm I'm, I'm very uh, very much on team get you, get your fucking running backs early, get your get your running backs often in the first few rounds of the draft because from a team roster construction standpoint, uh, that's how you want to be building. And once you get to like the fourth fifth round, the running backs stink and the wide receivers are great. So it kind of sucks when you're sitting there and you're like, ah, fuck. I took a wide receiver when I could have taken, you know, Chris Carson or, or J.K. Dobbins or whatever. And you take a wide receiver instead. And then you're like, there are still so many good wide receivers left in the middle rounds. But I don't know. Safe, Stephon Diggs is safe. He's he's whatever. Um, Chris Carson up at the two two eight. I think that's that's starting to get into territory where we're not weighing in any risks with Carson. His injury history, uh, as well as maybe Rashad Penny being bike in Seattle and actually possibly healthy this year. Um, so I think that's about, uh, that's about the tipping point where, uh, where, where, where like just needing a fucking running back to be drafted versus who the actual player is, is starting to collide. It's like an X, Y graph where the two points are intersecting and we're starting to use the data and we are making incorrect informational picks based on the data. D hop at two nine, JK Dobbins at two ten. Uh, you know, my thoughts on J.K. Dobbins, like, I know we keep hearing how they're going to be using a committee, and I don't think, like, them saying that should affect any way that you've looked at J.K. Dobbins up to this point, because we've always known they were going to fucking use a committee. Do we? Did we think they were going to give J.K. Dobbins 25 touches a game? No. What the, if, 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 if you like J.K. Dobbins as a player, you should still be drafting him at his ADP. You should still be looking at him at the end of the second round, early third round, because he could very much put up the same um let's let's uh let's look at Mark Ingram's numbers from two years ago when he was like the RB eight. <clears throat> Can we group these? From a couple of years ago, uh when he went two oh two for over a thousand yards, ten touchdowns, twenty nine catches. 29 targets, 26 catches, 247 receiving yards, five touchdowns. So if Mark Ingram can do this in this offense, I understand he was like wildly efficient with the touchdowns. But if you don't think J.K. Dobbins can do that, I feel like you are uh, doing yourself a disservice. Like we don't need J.K. Dobbins to go over 350 touches. We need him to get 260 and uh, he will score a lot of touchdowns and he will be wildly efficient on those. So we are almost up and Glizzy God took Keenan Allen, which was a great pick there. I still think Keenan Allen is by far and away the best value in fantasy football drafts in the third round aj brown going to the three six i really like that too uh okay so we're sitting here michael thomas in the third round i feel like is a fantastic value and this is why you want to go with running backs early and often because the the fucking trash that is left here was like the the pizza crust that was left on the fucking street side that the guys were like this ain't even garbage we're writing you up for citations for not properly packing up your garbage and leaving it on the adp list you know what we're this is gonna be a safe draft we're gonna go with a safe draft and see how this one turns out we're gonna go with something I, I usually don't do this is like a what the what the fucking weirdos in the fantasy community call modified zero subjective rp algorithms where you just go with like one running back early that's the staple of your team and then, you know, you hit the middle rounds with with just great wide receivers and you and you stack like a really nice core to your team. And then uh, and then you, you load up on guys like high upside running backs later on in the draft that you hope kind of hit. So that's what we did so far. We got Zeke. We got Stefan Diggs. We got Michael Thomas. That's just way. That's just the way the draft played out, because I'm listen, I want the running backs early, but I'm not just going to start reaching on running backs that I don't think are good or they're good value at that spot. But back to back to like J.K. JK Dobbins in this situation in Baltimore, because Mark Ingram is gone like. Listen, at the end of the year last year, J.K. Dobbins was scoring touchdowns at a rate that was very high, and that was with Gus Edwards on the field. Like, they were splitting goal line carries. Dobbins was getting more of them. I think J.K. Dobbins can easily rip off 10 touchdowns this year on the ground, and if he's averaging what he did last year on the ground, five I mean, he was up at like six yards a carry, but if he's averaging 5.3, 5.5, he only needs, you know, 180, 200 carries, 220 carries to, to rip off 1,100, 1,200 yards on the ground because he's explosive. He has those big runs. Um Scores eight touchdowns there. The receiving game, of course, is going to be uh, a, an issue. But the good news is, with Mark Ingram gone, like he is the only back out of the backfield that's really going to be catching passes. You can you can miss us with the Justice Hill hype. Gus Edwards, we know, 
has fucking stones for hands. So if there's going to be a guy that's catching passes out of the backfield, it's going to be J.K. Dobbins, and he can replicate these numbers here. You know, if he throws up 1,200 yards, 1,100 yards on the ground, plus 250, 350 uh, through the air, you're looking at a guy who's who's quietly going to rip off 1,300 to 1,500 yards from scrimmage and probably a high number of touchdowns, you know, somewhere from like the 8 to 12 range if he gets lucky on his higher range of, of outcomes. So I think he's a high floor, but I think we're starting to underrate his ceiling a little bit. All right, I am on the clock. We're sitting here at the 4-6, and there's still a lot of fantastic, fantastic wide receivers on the board. So I'm kind of glad that we started to go with this approach a little bit. Uh, now, if Mahomes is still there, I would grab him, but I'm not really looking to take a tight end. Or a, uh, Wow, Kyle Pitts' ADP shot up after the, after the uh, you know, I don't even hate Mike Davis or Josh Jacobs here, but we're going to go with Mike Evans here because I think Mike, Ev I think Mike Evans is a fantastic best ball player. Drink a shot of tequila if you've ever heard that before. He's just a guy that, like, he's tougher to gauge. Oh, my goodness. He's tougher to gauge uh, in season long because I feel like I don't know if there's going to be a lot of guys in that offense that get a ton of volume in the passing game, right? Like, Tom Brady's going to be super fucking efficient. That offense is going to be super fucking efficient. But that defense is going to be so good to the point where they're not going to have to air out the ball every game, right? And that means Brady might have a few games where he's throwing the ball 30 times and split between Evans and... Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, their running backs, Gronk, OJ Howard's going to be fucking bike. Um, that begs the question: like, how much, how many, how many games is Mike Evans going to get more than six targets? I don't know, but he is going to be the premier red zone end zone threat, right? Uh, so Evans is a guy that you don't have to predict when he's going to have those two, three touchdown games, right? You don't have to choose when, whether he's getting into your lineup or not, and uh, that's why I, I kind of love him in the fourth round because I feel like. I don't want to say he's got a floor of 10 touchdowns, but Brady's going to throw for, you know, 38 touchdowns this year. And I feel like Evans will will have a floor of like nine or 10 touchdowns, um, which is very useful for best ball down here. So the team so far, we have Zeke, we have Michael Thomas, we have Mike Evans. Now, Kyle Pitts, we just saw Senate take him at the 410. Um, so his ADP now on underdog is 40, I think it was 49 overall, maybe. And just a couple of weeks ago, right before the Julio trade, it was around 60. And I think, I think... Uh, I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't know if I want to take him in the fourth round with these kind of wide receivers still available, or even the quarterback still available. Because Josh Allen can give you a really nice positional advantage up there, at quarterback. Whereas Kyle Pitts is exciting, but he does he doesn't give you the advantage. Like even if he hits those projections that people are, are like really excited about, like sixty five for seven fifty and five touchdowns, great rookie season. But that's not separating himself from. Like, is that really worth two rounds earlier than Mark Andrews or TJ Hawkinson? We're probably going to have very similar numbers to that. No, you're getting, I think people are getting too excited about Kyle Pitts in the fourth round. You have to remember that you're not drafting him to just, just to have a good rookie season. You're drafting him that early because you need him to have an advantage over the other guys. So we're sitting here. We are four picks away. We're going to throw Cooper Cup into the queue. I have no Jamar Chase because he keeps going earlier than I'm willing to uh, dive in on. I would like to actually get Kareem Hunt as my second running back here. I don't think I'm going to get him. But Senate has three running backs already. Cool Socks Bro has three running backs already. Glizzy God has three running backs already. So there's a chance that I can get him. Senate goes with Deontay Johnson. It all depends on whether or not KPB takes Kareem Hunt here. I'd really appreciate it if you just if you just went ahead, just do me a do me a fucking solid on this Monday morning. Just go ahead and don't take him. Just go ahead and just don't do that, KPB. Sick. Good pick with Lamar though. Good pick with these quarter. We had a little wow. Josh Allen is still sitting there. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, and I have Stephon Diggs. This one hurts. I feel like I need to do this stack. I I need to do the Allen Diggs stack because he's just sitting there. He's fallen fucking 10 spots below his ADP. This is the hardest decision I've ever had to make in my entire life. Yeah, Cream Hunt ain't worth it. Cream Hunt ain't fucking worth it. Let's go. All right, so we got we got the QB2 all the way down at QB5. And now we stacked Josh Allen with Stefan Diggs. And I couldn't be more indifferent about it if we're going to be transparent. Okay, so fifth round seems to be that wide receiver quarterback run. That happens often, but you're still able to get Jalen Hurts all the way at the 78th pick in like the seventh, eighth round. Not even not even me yelling about it in individual videos and in these underdog videos, time in and time out, can get y'all to start drafting Jalen Hurts higher. But I get it. I get it. It's fine. 
idiots. Raheem Mostert in the 5-2 spot? In the 5-2 spot? Even after the report came out today about Trey Sermon getting those first round reps or those first team reps? I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. Trey Sermon's going to get picked way too high soon. I bet, I bet Senate's the one that takes him. I'd put money on it. And I hate all the running backs on the board right now. I do like Damian Harris still sitting there at the 85 ADP. Leonard Fournette at 95. See, those are the guys I'm going to be hammering my wide receiver spot with. Uh, and I might just continue on this safe this safe draft route. If TJ Hawkinson falls to me at 6'6", I would love that because I think he's just going to be a tar- target magnet here. He might not be that good, but I feel like he's going to be really good in PPR. Like, he'll have, you know, 10 games of fucking six, seven, eight targets, and that's great for for tight ends. There's nobody in that passing offense. Jared Goff's going to throw the ball 650 times this year. Easy. You know, give uh, give give Hawkinson a, a light. Let me see what his target share was last year. There needs to be a way to, like, combine these two things. Can I do this and... Fucking. There's no way to combine those two, huh? I promise I'll move myself once I get to the information. How is he best comparable to Travis Kelsey? That's absurd. Uh, come on, come on. Target share of 18%, okay? So you give someone a target share of 18... Fucking Sumio, you stupid motherfucker. <sighs> there we go. Jalen Hurts at the 6-5. You guys are finally learning. Okay, so we have Mark Andrews. We got Dallas Goddard. I don't know if I really like Mark Andrews enough to take him now. I did really want Hawkinson. Do we like Chase Edmonds? Eh. I don't hate him. He'll have his games, but, like, I don't really love him. Damn, I have no shares of Mark Andrews yet. I don't think so. I'm, I'm gonna take Andrews. I still think he's a good. I still think he's a good fucking ball player. He's a good guy, a good ball player, better man. Uh, back to Hawkinson though. He had an 18% target share last year. That was with Marvin Jones. Um, I know Kenny Galladay didn't really play, but to fill airtime, that was with Kenny Galladay still on the roster. But he's gonna be taken over as one of the top targets. So you say, you know, fucking Jared Goff throws the ball 650 times. 18% target share, assuming it doesn't get raised up. That's 117 targets. Let's say he takes a 20% target share of that. We're looking at 130 targets. How many tight ends last year had 130 targets? Let's have a day. Let's have a day. The list of tight ends last year that had more than 130 targets. Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey. And the list of tight ends that had more than 120 targets. Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey. End of list. The list of tight ends that had more than 110 targets. Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey. End of list. Draft TJ Hawkinson. End of story. Okay, so we had uh, so I took Mark Andrews, not not my favorite pick, definitely not my favorite pick. I probably could have opted to wait a round or two, grab Dallas Goddard, or even I don't have a lot of no offense. I wouldn't have hated that, but it is what it be. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe Chase Edmonds. I, I don't like I don't hate Chase Edmonds as the RB two when we're just fading running backs altogether. Ooh, Cortland Sutton still sitting there. But, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get my pick of one of these guys, Jace Edmonds, Damian Harris, Fournette. I mean, the seventh round is definitely not a, not ideal to go with those guys, but you know how juicy running backs are. Ooh, Michael Carter all the way in the seventh, huh? That's way too high for me. Guys, Michael, I, listen, we like Michael Carter, but, like, he was, he was a fourth-round running back. Fourth-round running back, people. We need to be weighing the risks and the rewards at, at, a, uh, at, a, much, at a much better level than just fucking – Using seventh round cap, of course. There goes Damian Harris. How like I don't understand how come every time I draft with people, like every time I draft with people, all of my guys go five thousand spots ahead of ADP. Actually, I fucking understand it really well. It's because you guys are people that watch my stupid ass videos.
Chase, Chase, fall to me. One time, baby. One time, give me some luck. One time. Arthur Smith, Debo Samuel. Come on. Come on, baby. Scotter, don't do it to me, KPB. Don't do it to me. Don't done do it to me. Let's fucking go. All right, all right, all right. Now we're talking. We got Chase as the RB2. His ADP is 68, typically. ADP is 68. What is... uh? And I just got him at pick... I just got him at pick 79. So I got him a f uh, 12 spots, 11 spots later than his ADP. And listen, you know, I, there's a lot of guys I don't like for redraft, and I've made videos on that. You know, my... Uh, I do not draft list for both running backs and wide receivers. Those videos went out last week or two weeks ago. I will link those in the um, I will link those in the description if you have not yet watched those. My uh, the all fade list for BDGE and Chase Edmonds was on it, but that was because Chase Edmonds was starting to go at like the five eight or so, and I'm like that's way too early for a guy who has never had more than a hundred carries in a season. He was top five in target running backs last year. Obviously, Kenyon Drake is gone. They signed James Conner which is way more of a concern than people are making it out to be because James Conner is going to take a lot of goal line work. We know that Kenyon Drake dominated goal line. That's like one of the craziest stats to me all uh, of all last year. Kenyon Drake had 21 goal line carries. Chase Edmonds had one. Okay. And I don't, I just don't expect like we just, we, Cliff showed his cards. He's like, can you, uh, Chase Edmonds is clearly not the goal line guy. Chase Edmonds is clearly not the between the twenties guy. Um, so we know what he is. So I, I think we, we try to project these players into roles that we've already been told they're not that player, but, uh, all the way down at the end of the seventh round as my RB two, a guy who's, you know, going to get 60, 70, 80 targets more than happy with that. And I'll have his explosive games. If James Conner can't stay healthy, which he hasn't been able to prove that he can over the last few years, then I'll have those spike weeks. We'll have those spike weeks from Chase Edmonds where he gets 20 plus carries. That's what, that's what the game is all a fucking about people. That's what it's all about. Who else are we liking here at running back? So I actually like all these guys now at value. Like Melvin Gordon, I've gotten Melvin Gordon at like the nine five or later in a lot of different drafts. Um, and I, I honestly I don't like love Melvin Gordon. He's not a guy I'm going to be targeting this year. But I think like everyone just gets excited about Javante Williams, who's going where? How early did he go? Tell me he didn't go all the way up here. This has to be a joke. Or did he not get picked yet? What the fuck? Four or five. Stop that. Stop that. These rookie running. Dude, I don't know. Do we like not? We just don't learn our lesson, huh? Every year we chase after second and third round running backs rookie year, and we know that they don't break out until like week nine or ten. I don't know. That's way too high. Like people, do, I, I feel like people in these drafts they only they only consider upside. Like that's it, and it's just it's just not the way to play fantasy. You have to do risk reward for both. I won't even reach for running back if I don't need to. Because listen, you start three wide receivers. We're going to end up drafting seven or eight guys at the wide receiver position. They're going to start the software automatically starts the best players each week, um, and we are going to draft a lot of them so three of them will be started at the wide receiver spots but then there's also a flex spot oh nice pick with michael gallup i'm getting a little bit higher in gallup i, I kind of like gallup i like to diversify in that dallas receiving group and uh gallup's basically free compared to the other two so i've been getting a little bit more uh more gallup i was actually thinking about taking juju there if he fell i'm not like too disappointed but uh juju's a guy that i want to know part of but you know end of the eighth round i feel like i feel like it's it's worth diversifying there Curtis Samuel's a guy I probably don't have enough of. Brandon Cooks. What are we looking at here? Melvin Gordon, Zach Moss, Ronald Jones. I actually don't hate Ronald Jones here either. Do we like to go with Evans and Ronald Jones together? Probably not. Uh, fuck it. We won't do it live, though. Or we're just going to get auto-drafted. Okay. Curtis Samuel. That would have probably been my pick anyways if I didn't go with the running back. So we timed out as usual because I'm a fucking idiot. And we took Curtis Samuel. Um, I can, listen, Curtis Samuel... I just, I just, I have such a hard time buying. In, I don't know why. I have such a hard time buying into players like Curtis Samuel, where it's just like the role is 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 just so difficult to project, or the role is so difficult to just get behind. Like there's just 
very little volume there for a guy like Curtis Samuel unless they're really going to start playing him as the wide receiver too. Like, listen, he's going to Washington where he's going to be playing under Ron Rivera. And he, we already saw that. And it wasn't good for Curtis Samuel's fantasy outlook. He got overthrown on a ton of deep balls, obviously, during his time in Carolina. Things could have been better. But we know from Matt Harmon's reception perception that Curtis Samuel is a fantastic route runner. Really, really, really successful against man coverage, against press coverage, which is usually the telltale sign of, of a good running back. Um, or a good wide receiver, you know, one that's going to eventually break out and succeed. Uh, I just I just have a hard time seeing him getting like enough enough uh, volume in an offense where Terry's going to be a 135 target guy. Logan Thomas had 110 targets last year. We have Gibson. We have J.D. McKissick. We have Deami Brown coming in. You know, I guess uh, that makes Curtis Samuel wait on it. Better in best ball. Wow. Look at this cute little quarterback run here. Aaron Rodgers at the 811. So so I've kind of made up my mind on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers coming bike. Aaron Rodgers going to come bike. He's going to be playing for the Packers. Uh, it's just basically a fact. Here's the thing. Like, he can't... The, the, the Packers are not... He was the MVP of the fucking league. The Packers are not going to trade him. They're not just going to trade him because he's unhappy. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have any power over them. He can sit out for the entire year, uh, but that would cost him a shitload of money. He would lose a shitload of money. And I know he's, I know he's loaded. He's got a lot of money, but this would be... Uh, a massive, a massive financial hit to him. I just don't think he's willing to do that. I do think he's he's willing to uh, go after other career endeavors. I just, I don't know. I don't see it happening. I don't see him not reporting back. Something's gonna happen, but he'll be bite. Hmm. All right, so these running running backs are still on the board. I can go with them. I got no Jarvis, man. Jarvis now sitting 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 pretty at the uh, in the ninth tenth round. I feel like Jarvis was banged up for a lot of last year, and we had Baker and him playing through like four games that were just abysmal weather wise, and that like killed him. I I don't hate Jarvis down here. I feel like Jarvis is going to be fine. I feel like he's going to get his hundred targets or whatever, put up a few games where yeah, I, I don't know Jarvis. I feel like the Jarvis hate has gone a little bit too far. He came into last year with like a serious, I think it was an ankle injury, either ankle or foot or something. I remember, and I wanted really no part of it because I thought it was, you know, going to have him get off to a really slow start. And uh, I think we saw that. So, I don't know. Jarvis down here, I feel like, is a pretty good best ball pick. So, this is the team so far. We have Josh Allen at quarterback, Zeke and Chase Edmonds at running back, uh, Stephon Diggs, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, Curtis Samuel, Jarvis Landry at wide receiver. Those are really good wide receivers. Mark Andrews at tight end. So I wish that was Hawkinson. But the team so far, like, I don't I don't dislike any of these picks. I feel like I'm getting good value at most of the spots. Um, so now is probably when we need to pivot and, and grab a running back. I am hoping that but I'm six picks away. Yeah, I'm hoping Melvin Gordon falls to me. Pollard's obviously a high upside guy, but I already have Zeke, so I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna grab a backfield. I just don't do that. James Conner, I already have Chase Edmonds, so I can't really do that. You know what? I'm not I'm not like against AJ Dillon. We're kind of unsure what his role is going to be here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Dillon had some standalone value this year. I don't know why. It's just like a it's just like a a, a, a gut feeling. And then obviously he has, you know, top <clears throat> top seven, eight upside if, if something were to happen to Aaron Jones. But I feel like he's gonna have some standalone value. And I know you guys are gonna absolutely just fucking end my life in the comment section. But David Johnson, man. David Johnson has been a guy I keep getting in like the 10th or 11th round. I just like, I, I just think the volume is going to be there. And that's not something that I usually say. If you're a shitty player and you're just going to get volume, they're not a guy I want on my team. But like, I don't, I, I understand that's probably not going to be Deshaun Watson, but there's not really a different outlook from David Johnson going into last year than there is this year. Just you idiots stop drafting him in the fourth round, third round, whatever you guys took him. And now you're getting him eight rounds later. There goes Pollard. There goes Connor. We are two picks away. Let's go. I'm, I'm going to take David Johnson here because he's he's the sure volume play, and I need volume at this point in my uh, in my draft because I only have two running backs. Who do we got left? A wide receiver. I like Darnell Mooney a lot. I like getting a lot of shares of him if I can. Irv Smith is kind of 
intriguing for me. Well, there goes AJ Dillon. Don't take David Johnson. Don't do it to me, Twig. Don't do it to me, Twiggy. Uh, again, y'all, if you want to draft with me, if you want to draft on underdog, this I'm telling you, this is the best way to prep because all of these drafts are at least three dollars to do it. Like the ADP and the actual draft that you're getting in is about as serious as you're going to find on the interwebs at this point in the off season. So you do a couple of these, do one a week or whatever. It's going to cost you like 30, 30 bucks for the summer. And you already have $35 on your account for using promo code BGE when you throw it down. And we're going to grab my guy, David Johnson. That sounded sickening just coming out of my mouth. Grab my guy, David Johnson. Uh, yeah, download the app again, linked in the description, linked first thing in the comment section. Um, use promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 or more bucks and they're going to throw $25 on top of that for absolutely the price of free for on the fucking house. Um, and there you go. And then you, you get to watch the trends. You get to watch horrible picks like, uh, Javonta Williams in the fourth round happen. And then you say, Hey, I already know I'm probably going to be fading him. And then maybe next month you see him drop back to the fifth round. And then maybe next month you see him drop down to the sixth round. And then you say, Hey, I start to do. I start to prepare my draft a little bit different because I know these guys are going to start dra dropping into the fifth, sixth round or whatever, you know? That's how you prepare for these drafts. You stay in the know of the trends and where these guys are going off the board, and Underdog obviously has the sharpest ADP here because uh, because all of them are real money drafts. And uh, you're not just throwing away money, obviously. If you, you come back at the end of the year, and if you're in the top three, you win money. Based on whatever the, the buy-in was, of course. How we doing? How we doing, everybody out there? Make sure you hit the thumbs up button too if you're enjoying the video. Those uh, that that lets YouTube know that I'm not a total piece of shit, just like half half a piece of shit, one half a piece of poop, the other half got stuck in your butt. Mikey Williams, we got seven picks away. I kind of like the 107. I feel like I'm, I'm like I'm always almost on the clock. Let's see what's going on in the Twitter world. Got four noties sitting there. Open, open. Yeah, also, guys, uh, if I tweet something out or if I throw it into the Discord, if I throw one of these links into the Discord and you join and it just takes you to the app screen or it takes you to the home page, that means the draft already filled. You got to be you got to be quick. You got to be quick on them shits because I send them out and then everyone wants to draft. So they fill up within like. 15 seconds so if you're not within the top 15 15th percentile if you ain't got a finger adjusted speed score in the top 95th percentile you ain't getting into the draft with me it's just the way it biz it's just the way it's the way this biz works do 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 see what kind of piece of shit pick senate makes oh my god i'm on rock on the 11th i feel like you just uh senate when are you gonna learn when are you gonna learn All right, so we got one quarter. I'm probably looking to take my second quarterback here. Let's see who's still left. You know what combo I, I'm starting to really like? Taking Trey Lance as you, your quarterback too, and then Cam Newton in the, like the last round, his ADP of 210. Because you're going to get – listen, you're going to get – Cam's going to be a top 12 quarterback this year for the first eight weeks of the season. That is not my prediction. That's just a fact. So I think them to flip like you're going to get top 12 cam for first eight weeks and then you're going to get like top eight Trey Lance second half of the season. So I don't hate I don't hate using two picks like that. That's a little uh, that's a little unlock for you. What else we got now? I'm glad we kind of shored up the uh, wide receiver position. Irv Smith sitting here in the 11th round. I think I'm going to grab him here. I think people are like off Irv Smith right now just because like something came out that his role was not going to change. I mean, the Kyle Rudolph's gone. Like, of course, his role is going to change. Why you why? Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? <laughs> How's you guys weekends, by the way? It's kind of weird doing this as a not a not as a live stream anymore. I'm probably going to go back to doing a live stream next week. It's a lot more fun. So I don't have to talk to myself for an hour. What did I do? Though? This weekend was actually a fucking mess. Saturday. What did we do Saturday? Saturday we went out for... Actually, you know what's fucking insane? 
<clears throat> so Saturday, my mom came into the city to, to have dinner with me. And we went out to a restaurant, whatever. And we're talking for a while. And then she says, you know, I went to Home Goods earlier today. Like, she just drops this bomb on me, like, 45 minutes into the conversation. She's like, I went to Home Goods today. And as I was going back out to my car, I saw a shopping cart next to my car. And I had to move it, you know, to get out. And I went to the shopping cart. And there was a purse left inside the shopping cart. And she picked up the purse. And she opened it. And inside the purse was... A handful of credit cards, like a bunch of credit cards, a bunch of papers, and then underneath it were stacks of cash, legitimate just stacks of, of straight cash. For you young, for you young people out there that don't know what cash is, th- there was these like these little skinny like pieces of paper that were green that you we used to use in America to uh, to buy things. So there was st- these there was these stacks of these so called cash things inside the purse. And they were rubber banded up. It was like straight out of a fucking movie, like drug dealer type shit. So she waited in the parking lot for like 30 minutes to see if someone came racing back in to find it. Because it was just a purse full of credit cards and cash, right? No one came back. And this was right before she came out to see me. And she tells me about it. And I'm like, no fucking way. Like, you know, you got to show me this. And uh, we will continue story time after my pick. Nelson Aguilar, Henry Ruggs. All right, now we are sitting bike here. Did Trey Lance go off the board? Because I'm going to take him if not. Yeah, he fucking did. Damn it. Damn it. Damn. I might actually grab, eh, Kirk. Do I have any? So I could I could stack I could stack Kirk here with Irv, or I can stack Fitzpatrick here with, I have a lot of stack options, actually, so I'm not going to take any of them because almost anything would work out. What kind of wide receivers we got sitting here? Nah, I'm going to grab another running back here. Uh, Darrell Henderson. I'll go Darrell Henderson here. I have no logical reason for why I took him there. Um, I like Cam Akers a whole fucking lot to just be the workhorse there, but Darrell Henderson. Yay. What a pick. Okay. Anyways, back to story time. So she brings it and she's like, yeah, it's in my car right now. So after, after we had lunch or dinner or whatever, went back to her car and lo and behold, there was a bag. And the bag had stacks of cash in it, 50s, 100s. It was probably around $8,000 worth of cash. And I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. You know, I used to have like, I used to feel like, I feel like when I was younger, I used to think about the situation where I just I was walking down the street one day and it was just like a plastic bag filled with cash sitting there. And what would I, what I do with it? And I was like, mom, listen, <clears throat> I'm not going to judge you either way. I'm not going to judge you with whatever you want to do with this bag, you know? She was because she was like, I don't know what to do with it. Like, obviously, I could really use the money. You know, my mom's a single mom. Like, she, she has bills and whatever, right? You know, she's like, I could really use the cash, but like, I feel like this is really, really bad karma if I take this, and I don't, I don't want to have bad karma. I'm like, mom, I fucking hate that you look at it that way. You know, I'm not gonna judge you whether you turn it in. I'm not gonna judge you if you decide to keep the cash. Because it's just sketchy. Like, I don't know if she's on a fucking TV show. Is Are they watching her? Did, was there cameras? There was like a TV team, a fucking team just just with cameras set up watching her take take the purse. She waited there, right? So if this does get televised, at least she looks like a semi-good person. Um, and then she texted me the next day and she said, which I fucking hated that she did this. I told her, I, I said, listen, this is what I would, this is probably what I would do in the situation. Actually, I'm hesitant to even say this on air because it makes me sound like a piece of shit. I would, because the person's information was in the bag, there's a lot of paperwork and credit cards and things like that, I would look up the person. I would look up the person and use your best judgment on whether or not they were a, like, drug dealer or whether or not they were into some really sketchy shit and then decide what you want to do with the money. So, listen, if you look it up and it's, like, a single mom with, like, two kids that she's raising or she's got, she's going through, like, fucking chemotherapy or something, you know, it's obviously you're going to give the money back because they need it. But otherwise, like, you know, I don't know that that's, that's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's like credit cards and, and, and just, just stacks and stacks of cash. It's like, it's like what, what fucking human carries around stuff like this? Um, so I was like, use your best judgment. And then she texted me back and she was just like, yeah, I, I, I dropped it off at a police station. Um, I dropped it off at the police station and, uh, and they'll take care of it. And I was like, that's the worst fucking thing you could do. At least drop it back with the person. If you're going to give it back, drop it at the police station because fucking they're just going to take that shit. Maybe I'm lying. I don't know. Maybe after a certain number of days, if no one claims it, then she gets a bike. I don't. I don't know how that shit works. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm only technically a police officer. You know. I don't know. What would you guys do in that situation? You just find stacks of cash. What do you What do you do? Do you give it back to the person? You give it to the police? Do you take that shit? And I, what I would do, I was. I would deposit all of it on fucking underdog. Using promo code BDG, you get that eight thousand dollars plus twenty five dollars on top of it. 
That's what I would do. That was honestly that was one giant ad read for you guys to deposit on on Underdog. If you weren't before and that ad read didn't get you, I don't know what the fuck you could do now. Just, I'll just never be able to get you. I'm kidding. That was a true. That was a very true story. I'm not sure why I told that live on air, but she returned it. All right, my mom's a good fucking person, way better person than me. All right, so we had Daryl Henderson. We got a run of quarterbacks: Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan, Tevin Coleman, Gronk, Deshaun Watson. So I actually have some shares of Deshaun Watson in these best ball drafts, but only because I've I've gotten him in the 15th round of drafts. We haven't seen like a running back off the board in about two rounds. I feel like, um, yeah. So I'll take I'll take Watson when he drops in the 14th, 15th, 16th round, which is not hyperbole. I've act, I've like literally gotten him there. Uh, let's see what we got at quarterback. Did anyone else go off the board? Okay, so we could take the last stack that we have with Fitzpatrick and Curtis Samuel. I don't hate that. I feel like I feel like Fitzpatrick will put up spike weeks at, like he did in Miami. So he's he's a fine best ball pick in the thirteenth round. I like Daniel Jones a lot too. Obviously, I just would rather probably do the stacks when I can. You know, I, I don't. I, I'm not trying to go out of my way to stack players. You know, a lot of people have gone to the point where like in best ball you have to stack, and I'm not like going to reach for fucking who do I got on my team. Cleveland, Washington, Tampa Bay, New Orleans. Like, I'm not going to reach for Jameis Winston here, or fucking do something stupid just to stack when he, I can get him five rounds later. Um, but if it's there, you know, Fitz was like the next quarterback off the board, and I like Fitz anyways in the 13th round, and I have the Washington player. I'm like, that. that's when you That's when you use the stack. You use the stack as a tiebreaker between Daniel Jones and Ryan Fitzpatrick because I have the Washington player. That's how you stack. That's how it's fucking done. Pringles would be proud. T.Y. Hilton, Denzel Mims, Jonah Smith. I really have no idea what to do with the New England tight ends. Listen, like, everyone's like, no, just draft both of them. They're both going to be good. They're both good players. But listen, Cam Newton threw fucking eight touchdowns last year. That's that's also not hyperbole. Cam Newton was the starting quarterback for an NFL team for basically the entire season and threw eight touchdown passes. Eight, okay? Fucking eight. So when we're talking about the tight end position, a uh, position that thrives in fantasy on scoring touchdowns, I probably want the guy who's throwing the t- like it, it wasn't like tight end scored eight touchdowns in New England last year. Cam Newton threw eight touchdowns last year. So I don't know. This is not full PPR. This is not tight end premium. Everybody gets half PPR. I just I just have a hard time buying into the New England tight ends right now. You know, man, how Devin Singletary has fallen. He was like a fourth round pick, fifth round pick last year. He uh he he is really he's really hurting, huh? What other running backs can I take? So, like, you have high upside running backs in Rashad Penny. But I, I really just want players who are going to put up points. Because I went, I because I faded the position so hard. Like, I, I, I don't want continuous zeros at the position. I want guys who are going to put up points. So, at least I'm getting points in that position. So, Rashad Penny could be a dud. Uh, Tariq Cohen, I guess, is not the worst pick. He'll, he'll, he'll get a bunch of targets. But coming off the injury, eh. Philip Lindsay could be a dud as well, and I already have David Johnson in the Houston backfield. James White is a guy that I honestly, like, I don't hate here. The Patriots resigned him. He's going to do whatever the fuck he does year in and year out. Just piss the shit out of people who drafted Damian Harris. Uh, but he's going to get targets, and he's going to score some points, although his targets really dipped down last year and uh, because, I guess, Cam Newton was under center, so I don't, like, love him. You know, we have five wide receivers. We could We can definitely take a few more wide receivers. I don't hate Brashad Perriman either down here in the 14th, 15th round. Like, he he could, you know, I like Amon Ross St. Brown, but, like, Brashad Perriman could emerge as the wide receiver one there for sure. He's had some good glimpses in his in his young, stallion-like career. Traquan I don't hate either. He could be a deep threat, but he's no longer available to pick thanks to Twig, a little cunt. John Brown, I think, is going to end up being the wide receiver one there in Las Vegas, to be honest. So I can't, I, I've been getting a lot of John Brown down here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have to use the bathroom, so what I'm going to do is put the board up on the screen for you guys and move this. I'm actually going to take this off the screen, but y'all, please, to help out the brand, help yourselves out. Use promo code BDGE when you download the Underdog app if you haven't already. Just click the link right down below. Just click the little link down below. It'll take you to the app where you download it. Put $10 or more and use promo code BDGE. That's going to get you free $25. Free $25. I don't know how long this deal is going to last for, so grab it now. Um, Grab it now. Okay, boom, bing, bang, boom. I'll put the board on the screen for you guys so you guys can see what's going on. I want to take a quick look at it. Look, bite, get it. Put my little ass up on here. 
Come on. Gem only. And obviously, if you just want to skip ahead until uh, until I'm talking again, that's fine. Uh, I can only show so much. But here's the first 11 rounds. What's up, y'all? How many picks did I miss? Oh, two picks away. I didn't even miss a pick. Look how fucking good I am. I'm on top of my shit. On top of my sheesh. Um, fake intern Tony's out in the living room editing up tomorrow's video. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Of course, tomorrow's video will be um will be probably terrible, but the content of the video will be. Christian Kirk, man, these these wide receivers actually stink that are left, huh? Uh got got James White snipe for me. Shucks. I'm actually gonna go with Tariq Cohen here. I don't know why, but fuck it, right? Tariq Cohen's explosive. He's he's fun. He had 80 catches two years ago. Give me 80 catches in this in the 15th round, and and we'll be happy here. He's gonna be a big problem for David Montgomery. I I, I haven't. I don't think I've drafted any David Montgomery in these drafts. I should probably get a, a few shares of him in case he's actually the fucking goat. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's video, tomorrow's video, again, make sure you subscribe for tomorrow's video, is our uh, Softy Seconds series, right, our Softy Seconds, in which we are breaking down uh, a running back and a wide receiver each week in the same video from the sophomore class. Tomorrow's video is Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and it is Brandon Ayuk, two of the trickiest players, I think, to break down in uh in 2021 fantasy football i think clyde could be a make or break guy for a lot of teams he's a guy that's going in the second round mid to late second round he's a guy with i think some red flags uh very high floor player obviously i think people are going to project that he has the ceiling that he might not have we all have to stay tuned for tomorrow's video to find out uh what the fuck was i even why was i even saying that oh because fake intern tony's out in the living room editing that video right now Let's see. We got Hunter Henry. We got Zach Wilson. We got Kadarius Tony. So we've heard bad reports about Kadarius Tony at camp so far. I think he's hurt. And I think he's had some bad plays, and I don't know. He's another player that I feel like might take a minute to really be impactful on the field. And by a minute, I mean possibly his entire career. So we're getting into the 16th round, and these best ball drafts are 18 rounds long. So again, you draft a monster team and it's because injuries happen you don't do anything on the waiver wire there are no in-season moves whatsoever okay so if uh ryan fitzpatrick just dies then josh allen will be my only quarterback right now and i have to hope that his uh that he can carry the team but that's that's not good because there are bye weeks and there are injuries to him as well sometimes you know like shit like that so you got to plan that's why you draft such a big team and then the software automatically starts the best players at each position Let's see what wide receivers we got. Christian Kirk, Sterling Shepard. So Christian Kirk, man, that, that third-year breakout prediction from a lot of people not looking good on Christian Kirk. They had A.J. Green. They had Rondell Moore. So that kind of puts a nail in the coffin of, of Mr. Kirk. Who else do we like that? You know I've been taking a lot of? I've been taking a lot 
a lot of MVS because again, I'm banking on the fact. Here's the thing: if um, if Aaron Rodgers comes back, and I'm drafting as if he is for the most part, if he comes back, MVS is a huge winner because it's not like listen. The only player they drafted was Amari Rodgers, and Amari Rodgers is a small slot guy. My Rogers is a small slot guy. Who is going to do that? Play the fucking slot. MVS is a completely different type of player. And uh, as soon as Aaron Rodgers comes bite, we're going to be like, okay, MVS, not a bad pick in the 14th, 15th round. Like MVS, not a great player. We know who he is at this point, but he has some monster, monster games. Um, and we know he's going to be on the field for Green Bay for whatever fucking reason. But this is the player. This is the kind of player that Amari Rodgers is. He is a slot guy. He's a yak guy. He's a line of scrimmage guy, right? Best, compar- best comparable to Lim Bowden. Um, five nine, whereas you know MVS, not not the best, but not the best player on the, on the board. Here we go, Marquez Valdez scaling. Let's look at some of his numbers from last year to know just how bad he truly was. I bet I bet I bet he's going to surprise us with some of his efficiency numbers. <clears throat> Have a day, computer. Have a day, three thousand dollar fucking computer. He was on the field for 80% of the Green Bay snaps. He had a target share of 14% from from Aaron Rodgers. Not too bad. Average target distance, number one in the NFL. 22 deep targets was top 12 in the NFL. What else do we got? Target quality rating, number 10. That's crazy how target quality rating, number 10, catchable target rate, I guess because it's deeper distance. Yards per reception, number one in the NFL. Yards per target, number six in the NFL. Drop rate, the highest drop rate in the NFL. You love to see that. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, I just think he, if Aaron Rodgers comes back, he becomes like a really, really huge winner in uh, basketball dream in the 16th round because he's going to have a couple games where he goes four for 112 and two touchdowns. And in that case, he will absolutely be in your starting lineup for these spots. Whereas, you know, you could draft guys like Terrell Williams, who uh, he could be, he could, uh, AJ Green, that's the ugliest pick I've ever seen. All these guys could be, Todd Gurley's not even on a fucking team. All these guys could be absolute zeros week in and week out for you. Whereas, I don't think that's going to be the case for MVS no matter what. I also like uh, Zacchaeus here. Uh, obviously, with the departure, with the dear departure of my, ah, glizzy God, you cunt. With the departure of my, uh, what I would call my uncle Julio Jones. You know, it opens up a lot for guys like Russell Gage and Olamide Kiss. Okay, what do we got here? Do we need another quarterback? Probably not with Josh Allen. So we'll probably keep hammering away at wide receiver here. See if maybe we need another running back. I tend to go with five running backs. That is like the basically tried and true best roster construction in terms of like highest win rate in the leagues. Five running backs, but that probably more so factors into having a few early round running backs. Uh Let's go with uh, Deshaun. I keep taking Deshaun Jackson. I know it's just such a bad pick. I know it's a bad pick. Oh, they gave me fucking Christian Kirk. It's on me. It's on me. It's on me for for not using the Q. I say it's on me. Like, fucking of course it's on me. I'm in a, my fucking bedroom recording by myself. Who else would it fucking be on? That's like... I, I can't stand that when, like, basketball players, you know, I've been watching a lot of the NBA playoffs, but, like, basketball players just make a, a fucking terrible play. Like, they throw the ball 72 feet out of bounds, and then they'll just be like, that's on me, that's on me. It's like, cool, dude. Way to take responsibility for something fucking, you could have murdered someone in broad daylight, and it would have been less obvious than what you just did. Obviously, it's fucking on you. So that auto pick, on me, dog. That's on me. That's on me, Chris, Christian Kirk. That's on me, dog. Deshaun Jackson, I'm sorry, baby. You knew I wanted you bad. So we have two quarterbacks, five running backs, eight wide receivers, two tight ends. Uh, tight ends, I, I'm pretty like set all around except for at the running back. So I'm probably going to take another running back with my last pick here, and that will be the end of thy draft. We have, let's see, if there, is there anyone down here I like? Dude, you know, you know like who I might take, and I absolutely hate myself for taking him? It's actually two players I like here. Malcolm Brown and Elijah Mitchell. Malcolm Brown, I feel like, is going to play. You know what's funny? Malcolm Brown has a role in the NFL. It's to be a piece of shit. It's to be really, really annoying. It's to be a fly that keeps jumping onto your forehead but is too quick for you to actually slap. 
Malcolm Brown did it in LA, and I think he's going to do it in Miami. I think Malcolm Brown plays his way into a third down roll uh, and a goal line roll, and it's going to piss every Miles Gaskin owner off. And uh, and I'm going to be taking Malcolm Brown here because I don't know if anyone above him is even going to be on a roster by the time fucking September starts. Twig, don't do it to me. Let's go. Oh, he took a took Cam Newton in the 18th round. I really I, I feel like Cam Newton in the 18th round is one of the better best ball picks. Wow, four quarterbacks. Don't do this, people. Do not take four quarterbacks. Very poor roster construction. All right, so that that actually concludes my team and concludes this draft. <clears throat> uh, as soon as this wraps up, it'll show my team, and then we can kind of break it down a little bit. But m- make sure, make sure in the meantime, before the end clock hits, that you are subscribed to the channel. All right, a lot of y'all don't subscribe, and it's and it, it makes me feel sad. It makes me feel sad, and when I feel sad, I have to do three dollar best ball. Dra- I have to do three man best ball drafts, and uh, let's just let's just make sure that I keep doing twelve man best ball drafts. Put it that way, okay? This is not three-man best ball draft season because that just means Nick is sad. If you ever catch me in a three-man draft, understand that I'm in a bad place in my life, okay? Uh, so make sure you subscribe. I'm not sure how those two m- made sense together, but you know what I mean. Subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow we'll be breaking down CEH and Brandon Ayuk in depth. Uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up button on this video, of course. And most importantly, make sure you download the Underdog app from the link in the description and use promo code BGE when you do. Wayne Gallman. Uh, Boston Scott, Marlon Mack, Gio Bernard. Oh, we got all the fucking workhorse running bikes getting off the rip here. Sea Arbor. Sea Arbor 2. Who is the mystery relevant? <clears throat> My throat hurts. I forgot to tell you guys what I did this weekend. I just I forgot I segued straight into the, the, the that purse cash story. <clears throat> I drank a lot of Margs this weekend. <clears throat> if you couldn't tell by my demeanor and my energy in this draft uh okay so the final squad the final roster is uh josh allen and ryan fitzpatrick at quarterback that's the thing like i usually go with two and two if i get if i get pretty clean quarterbacks and tight ends i'll just go two at the position um i i I wouldn't i wouldn't fault you for going three at quarterback and or th- and or three at tight end. I usually don't go three and three. I almost only if I'm gonna go with three of one of them, I won't go with three of the other one. So like three quarterbacks, two tight ends, or three tight ends, two quarterbacks, depending on if you have a weakness. But I feel like I I don't I don't think there's a weakness to either position. So I figured I'd stack the position that was the weakest, and that was obviously my running back. But Zeke will anchor it. He'll probably fit into my RB one role for most weeks. Again, you don't actually do any sit starts. It starts the best players. You don't do waiver wires. No trading. Nothing in season. You just come bike at the end of the year and collect your monies. Uh, so I don't hate this team going wide receiver early. Uh, I hate my running backs, of course, but there there is volume to be had later on in the draft. I think a guy like David Johnson in the 10th round makes a lot of sense if you build a roster like this. And uh, and that's going to be it. I kind of want to go to the projections just, just to see. <clears throat> this isn't the team I just drafted, is it? No. Oh, it was a $5 draft. Yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, that's the video, y'all. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making me not do a three-man best ball draft. That's it. I'm out. Bye.